why the hell not because it just helps me minimize if that makes any sense hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is Andre Marie if you haven't been here before welcome hi and um, my video today is again a simple one I just want to um, talk about how to pick yourself up after the pandemic now again I'm not a professional I'm just a professional at me and what works for my business my salon and these are the things that I've learned along the way so if you can pick a tip up or two then go ahead I'm going along this journey with you guys some things I've been through and I've fixed some things I'm currently going through so um I always feel like it's a good way to vent and talk about it in an honest manner so that you know if it helps someone great um, if there's any advice as well, great. So let's get into the video. So if you live in the UK, you would know that um, after April 12th, everything, well not everything, most things were able to open again, including salons, hair care, self care, bits and bobs, and obviously the salon was one of those things. Now, after being closed for five months, because we were closed from December 19th until April 12th, April 13th. So. January, February, March, April, okay, four months. Yeah, four months. So it was, you know, a pretty long time to be closed. Not forgetting that we were also closed from November 4th to December 2nd. And then we were also closed from March 21st, 2020 until July 3rd, 2020. So altogether, we were closed and let me just count that because the math thing ain't math in. So how long were we closed for? April, May, June, July, four months. Nine, nine months we were closed out of um, the past 14 months. So we haven't been open very much and um, that can be taxing for businesses. And one of the things I have, I have found is to keep my outgoings very very low to keep a lot of things going as cash because it just helps me minimize um, my outgoing so if i don't have to have a long-term contract with anybody i won't there's no need so a lot of things that i have that are contract based are very low outgoings that i can pay for myself if i need to or cancel and start back again so a lot of things are on either 30-day contracts which can be cancelled quite quickly or they are on uh, yeah just short-term contracts um or pay-as-you-go contracts i.e my bins um i used to be on a contract that tied me into a year um not a year it tied me in for like three months and i had to give three months notice before i cancelled now i'm in a um pay-as-you-go one whereby if i don't fancy it i could just pick up somebody else um and i pay for the items up front I have 30 day contracts with some of my wholesalers so um, I have accounts with them and you, you have 30 days to pay it off which if I if I don't have the money right now helps me to pay further along but a lot of those companies again because of Covid have had to stop um, the sort of line credit or credit limit and now have changed it to paying up front which works as well for me because I'm paying for the stuff that I have and I know it's mine. Um, until it's finished and then I replenish it that way so um, what that means is that you always have to kind of have a bit of a, a extra money um, which may or may not be what you want but again you can go for all those other options but this is what just works for me for me personally I find um, and I didn't like it in the beginning I didn't really like paying for things up front I just thought it was very tedious and I thought it was bad business um, but now that we're in the situation that we are in whereby we don't know where we're going to be open closed it very much works for if I need to cancel anything and um, pause anything yeah like it just really helps there are a few things that are, are on long-term contracts but again the long-term contracts are no more than six months three months um I don't tie into anything that ties me in for more than a year because I don't want it <laughs> so yeah so that I just find that keeping my outgoings quite low and down to the necessities. I don't pick up new things unless I absolutely believe in them. Um, I think that really helps. My second tip kind of runs into my first 
again necessities only um i really focus and make a list of the things that are necessary for the salon so it will be rent um electricity lights water and then all the other stuff will come underneath so making sure that i've got products to so that my services can keep going making sure that i have um i'm trying to think of what the next things are but it's just whatever your list is so whatever that list may be for wherever you work i just made sure that i made a list of almost like a hierarchy of what's important what's necessary and i kept that as a minim minimalistic simple list that i could work with and um, work alongside because i felt like that's what my business needed to keep going i didn't try to add any extras i didn't try to add um anything like bedazzling <laughs> but at the same time keeping in mind that my clients i want to make them feel special i also want to I, like we've been through it you know this last year has been wild like never in my dreams would i think that i would be out of work for the better part of a year and also that the whole world would be with me <laughs> on that journey. Many people were able to work, but many weren't. Many have lost jobs. So I, I just feel like we've all been through it. So for me, part of the necessity is making my clients feel special. We, you spend a pretty buck when you come to the salon. You don't spend a tiny amount of money. You do spend a pretty buck. So it's all, also about keeping the elements of what the boutique experience is for my clients and um, whether that is if the price point is for me quite a medium to high depending on the clientele is it's for working women and um, my target audience has always been working women women who want um, to feel like they're walking into a space that they deserve and also to have their time respected and um, I have to make sure that there's a certain standard that's kept and that doesn't drop because of whatever's happening around us. So, you know, things like, little things like Prosecco Saturdays, um, making sure that the salon's not overcrowded anyways, regardless of C-O-V. <laughs> She's got a point. Just making sure that things that were important in 2017 are still just as important in 2021 when the world is not quite back to the way it was. So, um, you know, still having conversations. One of the rules is that we're not really allowed to have conversations with our clients. What is a salon without conversation? So just still being able to have chit chat, still being able to have music vibes, um, you know, have a nice environment that clients can be in and kind of try and forget about whatever is happening. We can't go to the club, but you can go to the salon and have a chit chat with the girls in there. And that's what I think is really important. Now, as much as um, the clients are important, everything is important, your business is also important. And one of the things that I learned is that I have to highlight the services that bring in the income, the services that make me work smart, but also deliver to the client. So one of the first things I did when the salon opened is I heavily emphasized on the, on the services that would bring in the income but also I knew that clients needed it. All, for me, it's always about meeting in the middle, making sure that I'm doing what I'm doing with passion, but also making sure that it's bringing in income because I have a house. I, have, I still have things that I need to do. So things like relaxers, texture releases, um, and what I call the booster services, such and important services, such as the treatment, trims and blow dryers, which add bulk to the income were all very much like um, advertised welcomed um, during those first um, week or two. We're now in going into week four. Yeah, we're now going to week four. Is it week four? I don't know, maybe week three. I don't know, so we're now going to a four week three because we've done week one, week two. Yeah, we're going into week four. This is like the fourth week now. So we've done a third week and this third week was great. No more working 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Now we're back to regular hours because we've done the bulk of the, the rush. But now it's about making sure that you emphasize on the services that boost um, your income, that bring in the money, but also 
is a necessity for the people coming in. Now, luckily for me, um, the salon is known for doing what I would call the booster services and the income making services. So um, we've had a lot of those during this time. And then obviously we've also catered to the cuts and stuff like that. So it's just about advertising and making sure that the services that you provide are worth getting up in the morning for, worth coming into the shop for, and worth making the income that you need to make. Um, I would suggest maybe making a target for the day, whatever that target may be, um, and just making sure that by the end of the week you're hitting the target that you need to hit. Now that doesn't mean that you don't accept all clients because even though I have a target, I just have a minimum of what I would like to have per day. And sometimes that doesn't get achieved and it gets shifted over to the, to the next day or the day after that. But overall during the week, I always hit my target. So sometimes if you can't make a, a, a daily target, it might be good to just say, I want every week I want to make X, Y, and Z. This is what I want to make per week. And then anything above that is a surplus and can go into the kitty or wherever you want to put it. But it's just good to make sure that you boost some of the services. But I don't, I also want to say that don't emphasize on things that are going to make a rush of money, but you can't upkeep. Like I'm not bringing in any new services that I can't upkeep or can't fit into the, norm, the normal um, takings of the salon or doings of the salon. Like I wouldn't start doing braiding, for example. Braiding is not something that we do at the salon, like single braids. So I wouldn't do that just to bring in money. I would, um, again, only keep to the things that are already popular at the salon. If that makes any sense? Keep being yourself. That is what people come to your service for, if you are the face of it, if you are the people of it. I have team meetings with my team all the time and I infuse everybody to just be themselves. Bring joy, be nice, bring your personality to your job. And also, I mean, I love making people hair happy and I love make, having conversations with clients and actually just being generally, um, just people having a general pleasant experience at the salon so i do make it my business to try and make sure that clients have a good experience whether it's by making them talk if they if they seem a bit shy or just complimenting them um i'm making my business to tell women that they're beautiful every day i make it my business to shout out my clients whenever i can um i'm making my business to hype my clients whenever i can because you know what why not why the hell not I love doing that with the clients because I feel like it makes them feel better and it really takes nothing out of me, you know? I love making people feel happy and again, just bring joy. Um, I currently have um, one of the ladies that I work with who is <laughs> so funny and so amazing, Abby. Abby is the most optimistic person I have had around me in a very, very long time. I call her blissfully ob optimistic because she only sees joy, literally. She comes in and she's all about la la la, hi guys, how are you? And it's just such a joy to be around. It's beautiful to experience and it's so nice to have someone like that on your team because it rubs off on you. And I'm not saying I'm not a joyful person, but I've been in this game for a very long time. So sometimes I can be very fact-based, very much like, no, we need to do this, this, this. And having her and Miriam around has really, again, showed me what fresh, what fresh blood looks like and also bring me a new sense of joy and a new sense of what teammates mean. And um, yeah, so, Definitely, like the team that you have around you as well, um, will also bring the vibes to your space. I also make it a point not to play slow jams <laughs> in the salon. No slow jams, no love making, baby making music. Not because it's not the vibe, but I just think that slow jams can sometimes make you feel. Mm. And I want you to feel. Hmm. So. Yeah, no slow jams. We're playing soulful house. We're playing summertime music. We're playing old school R&B. We're playing noughties music. We're playing happy music. We're playing I'm a piano. Listen, it's a club in a good way. 
and that's it that's all i have to say um i hope these videos help i hope this video has helped in any way that um it possibly can um like i said a lot of the tips that i have are surrounded and about me and the salon so if you're a hairdresser and you have taken any from this i hope you have enjoyed this video but yeah like honestly i hope that everybody's doing well during this time because again it is a hard time and it's not easy i know a few people that have had to close their shops and um, whether they wanted to fed up or whatever and if you are going or starting something keep going if you can good luck kisses and i'll see you in my next video peace